you know, if that happens, then it becomes our overlord and we become its pet. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> now, that sounds pretty scary, but don't we treat our pets better than we treat other humans in the world? Think about it. The pet is kept warm and fed and happy. And you, and would you do that for a homeless person in the street, a person of your own species? Probably not. So if we're the pet for the super intelligence. What about the chicken? How bad could it be? We used to have chickens when we were younger. And I watched my Nigerian mother chase that chicken around the garden, grab it, pull its head off, and cook it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh you worried that it's going to do that for us? Yeah. We're going to run around? <laughs> not all my and, pets made and, it. And snap. <laughs> not all the pets survive. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it depends on whether it needs us to be alive or dead. We have to be relevant to it in some way. Maybe we'll be court jesters with the <laughs> entertainment. Until then, I, I don't know that this is some special moment. Uh, I do a lot of reading of history and throughout history. Most occasions, especially in the era of the Industrial Revolution, people think they're living in a special moment. Mm. So I'm not going to be that guy who says today is special. Because ep everyone has thought they were in a special moment. And what do you think is the probability of me getting to another planet in my lifetime? Zero. Is Zero. Really? Yeah. You want to know why? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please. Yeah, it's just zero. I thought SpaceX, going to go to Mars. I have an unorthodox view on this, so you don't have to, you don't have to believe me. You, you know, but... My read of history tells me that we only do big, expensive things if there's a geopolitical reason for it, either an economic reason or a defense reason, uh, not just because it's the next thing to do. And when we went to the moon, you realize in 1961, May 25th, President Kennedy, it's so six weeks after Yuri Gagarin flew around the Earth in orbit, and we didn't have a a ship that wouldn't blow up on the launch pad that could carry humans yet. He calls a joint session of Congress and says, if the events of recent weeks couldn't even utter the man's name, the events of recent weeks, and I paraphrase, are any indication of the impact of this adventure on the minds of men everywhere, then we need to show the world the path of freedom over the path of tyranny. It's a battle cry against communism, the godless Russians. Everyone in the whole Soviet Union. We were losing a technological race. And that was the battle cry that prompted Congress to write the check. Oh, later on he says, oh, it'll be, uh, put a man on the moon and before return him to safely the earth. And, oh, that's so beautiful. Let's hold hands. That's so beautiful. No one ever spent scads of money just because it was a cool thing to do. That has never happened ever. So, we go to the moon. People forgetting why we went to the moon say, while we're on the moon, at this rate, we'll be on Mars by 1985. That'll be the next ambitious goal we'll take on. No. Because we didn't just go to the moon because that was the next thing to do. We went to the moon to beat the Russians. And when we got to the moon and we looked over our shoulder and the Russians weren't there, we canceled the Apollo program. 19, we haven't been back to the moon in 53 years. We canceled it. Apollo 18 was ready to fly. It's now in captivity in Huntsville, Alabama, in a museum on its side. It's fascinating to walk the full length of it. All rocket re flight ready parts. It never flew. We ended at Apollo 17. No, we didn't go to Mars because we didn't have geopolitical reasons to do so, neither economic nor for defense reasons. Historically, people explored, did expensive things for the glory of God and royalty. Very expensive. The pyramids, the honor of royalty, okay? The church building, cathedral building, all of these activities were in the glory of power, deity, and royalty. There's none of that happens today. We're past that. The power of kings and gods that doesn't happen. Nobody dislodges major resources, capital resources of a nation 
in the interest of a god or a king anymore. Okay? It's secular. And secular means it's money or it's war because you feel threatened. Okay. So, you know we're going back to the moon now. Yeah. Project Artemis. Did you ever think to stop and ask why? Why didn't we stay on the moon in 1972? Why didn't we go back in 1980 or 1990, 2000, 2010? Oh, all of a sudden, let's go back to the moon. Wouldn't that be cool? Do you know when Artemis began? In the late teens? Right about when China says, we're going to put Taikonauts on the moon. Taikonauts? No, yeah, Chinese astronaut. Taikonaut. Uh, uh. All right. That's when we say, oh, let's go back to the moon. What a good idea. Let's do that. Really? Because we, we, it's just a good idea? Because we're a little bit spooked by a friendly foe across the, around the world might get the glory of that exercise. And once again, it's a godless country. Okay? Communism mm -hmm. is godless by design, by construct. So here we are going back to the moon. All right. What motivation do we have to go to Mars? Are there oil wells there? Is there, you know, diamond mines? We're not going to Mars. We're just not. Unless China says they want to put military bases on Mars. We're going to be on Mars in 10 months. <laughs> One month to design, build, and fund the thing, and nine months to get to Mars. A geopolitical force operating. Oh, and by the way, NASA doesn't have a rocket that'll get us to Mars. They think they do, but I don't really have one yet. Time to do that. They say, well, does anybody have a rocket? Elon says, I have a rocket. So if Elon rocket goes to Mars, it's not because he sends it there. It's because taxpayers sent it there. By the way, he could go there on a vanity project, but there's no business case. He, he could fly to Mars, team up with Jeff Bezos. They can send people to Mars. It's not a business case. And if you are an investor in his company, you would not agree to do that. You wouldn't. But he doesn't need investors because he's very wealthy. He could do it on his own. Are you going to Mars as a tourist? Is that, is that a business case? It'll, it's a trillion dollars to get to Mars first. Second will be a little less. I don't see that happening. A trillion dollars? About that, yeah. If Earth were a schoolroom globe, with your fist, show me where you think the moon is. This is Earth. Put, <laughs> take your fist and put it at the distance the moon is. Your fist is about the right size compared. Okay. Put I it. mean. Right there? Yeah. Okay, not too bad. It's 30 feet away. It's in the next room. Okay. 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 30 feet away. Okay. That's the moon. Let's keep going. How far away from Earth did the Bezos-Branson uh, rockets go? Oh, not far. The thickness of two dimes above the surface of the Earth. How far away is Mars? It's a mile away. From here? Yes, <laughs> from this Earth. It's a mile away. It's in Central Park. The moon, 30 feet away. Mars, a mile away. Yeah, it's a trillion dollars to Mars. Yes. How long? Nine months. If, and you have to wait till the planets are configured so that when you travel, you arrive where Mars will be when you get there. And that's a minimum energy orbit. If you have filling stations along the way, you can just fill up with fuel and get there as fast as you want. But minimum energy orbit takes about nine months. And then to come back, you have to wait till it's configured again a few years later. So a round trip to Mars is three to five years easily. So there's not an economic case. I'm not saying we don't know how to get to Mars. We have a SUV-sized rover there now, all right, discovering potential life from a billion years ago. It's not like we don't know how to get to Mars. This is not a technological statement I'm making. I'm talking about a practical statement. So, no. My read of history tells me no. I, I thought you were going to also add to that that even if Elon wanted to do it as a vanity project because he makes all this money and manages to use Starlink as a way to fund it, whatever, that the problem is Elon's going to die. He's going to die in the, you know, the next couple of decades, which means the vanity element that comes from his childhood situation where he wanted to get out there and explore the stars because he read that book has got 30 years, 40, 50 years left on it. 
Well, that would make him want to hurry, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And plus, he said, I don't want to die on Earth. I want to die on Mars. Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing, but that's the idea. So that's a goal. Sure. But don't tell me it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a business case. I can see a tourist case going into orbit and even possibly visiting the moon. It's three days there, three days back. That's a week's vacation that you would take. And I would save up five years, 10 years of vacation money if that was the amount that it would take to go to the moon in, for one week. That would be a really fun bucket list item 